Of course. Dude, I mean this in the most loving way possible. You're living in a bubble. Timing is the key. Timing's important, but it's not the key. <laughs> okay, so clearly, you think it's the decision itself. That's it. That's the key. The right decision. All right, humor me then. Let's say I'm mountain climbing. I'm up hanging from a cliff. I look up and I notice that my rope's about to break. If I'm you, I say, I've made the decision to buy a new rope. That is the right decision. I don't sound like that, right? What is it with these two? It's like they're brothers. <laughs> Aaron, we've got a show to do. Okay, guys, settle in. We're live in 10. Well, it looks like Gerald made the right decision. Here we go. Yeah, Five. Day too late. Four. Three. And cue intro. From around the corner and across the globe, it's the safety zone. In this episode, carbon monoxide safety. Good to have you with us. The Safety Zone is the only show dedicated to keeping our missionaries safe, healthy, and secure through video replay and analysis. I'm Vivian, this is Spencer, and this is Jerem. And today we're talking about, Spencer? Oh, thank you for giving me the honors. Carbon monoxide and the decisions you make. The right decisions. The timing of those decisions. You know what, what do you say we just get right to the video footage? Okay. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. A typical missionary apartment in Asia. I know because I've been there. Night mode? Are they asleep? For now. What in the world is that? Ah, uh, my friend, that is the apartment's water heater. I've never seen a water heater like that one. I served in South Korea. Units like this were entirely normal. But no matter where you serve, you're likely to use some kind of fuel-burning appliance. And that can mean carbon monoxide dangers. Is that what happened here? You're about to find out with the wonders of technology. Vivian has her fancy germ cam. I've got CO mode, which allows us to visualize carbon monoxide in the air. Whoa, 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 whoa. But you can't see carbon monoxide. It's colorless and odorless. True, but that's why we need the advanced technology. Nice. Oh, yeah, I can see it. In CO mode, you'll watch it waft into the back bedroom. And go ahead and freeze it right here. What happens next? Why did you... This is it, people. <laughs> right here, the decision point. Everything pivots on this exact moment. So what happened? In a minute. First, the decision point. What's going on in these elders' heads right now? Right now? Yeah. At this moment? Um, confusion, probably? It's the middle of the night. They're in a deep sleep cycle, and out of nowhere, they hear this alarm going off in their apartment, so yeah, confusion. And they've been breathing in carbon monoxide. That's going to multiply their confusion. Yeah, brutal, right? Carbon monoxide is a nasty beast. As we have mentioned, you can't see it, you can't smell it. Completely invisible, completely odorless. Which is what I just said. But did you know if you breathe it in, it forms carboxyhemoglobin in the blood? That decreases the amount of oxygen that can be carried to vital organs, especially the brain and the heart. I can't speak for both of you, but those are two of my favorite organs. My favorite's in the conference center. Carbon monoxide effectively smothers the brain and the heart. You could end up permanently disabled or worse, die. So what does that mean for these elders right now, now that they're in the decision point? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Well, Spencer stopped the video here at the decision point, but this isn't the decision point. See, these elders are in no condition to make a good decision right now. Their blood is full of carboxy something. Carboxy hemoglobin. Thank you. You know those little styrofoam packing peanuts? Mm -hmm. Their heads are full of them. This isn't the time to decide anything. Okay. Okay, I, I kind of get it now. The time to decide what to do is before something happens, like deciding to say no before someone offers you a cigarette. Yes. Or deciding what your standards are before you go out on a date. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or deciding what to eat before you get hungry. Look, the point is, decide early. Make the decision while you're thinking straight. Watch now. And just to be clear, we're out of CO mode here, right? That is correct. This is what it would normally look like. Can't see it, can't smell it. But clearly there's confusion happening for this elder. Doesn't help it that he was just asleep.
Elder. There's the carbon monoxide. Wake up. Okay, let's go ahead and stop it again. Why'd you stop it there? Yeah. Commercial break. When we return, the exciting conclusion. Okay, we're out. Seriously? Dude, broadcast 101, you know this. Hook the audience, hold their attention. Come on. Hey, you know, carbon monoxide can seep under doors and even through walls. Did you know that? Mm-hmm, because it's slightly less dense than air. One carbon atom, one oxygen atom, held together by one dative and two covalent bonds. Everybody knows that. Aaron, can you tell my co-host here why he chose to take a break at a terrible time? Jeremy, I just work here. But did you guys know that carbon monoxide can actually seep through walls? Yes. Everybody knows that. One carbon atom, one oxygen atom Tell held together down. by okay, a dative. Guys, here we go. Ready up. We are back. In five, four, three. Welcome back to the Safety Zone, Carbon Monoxide Edition. Welcome back, everyone. Just as we went to break, a CO alarm triggered, and we're waiting to see if these elders know what to do. Well, what happened? Yeah, tell us what they did. I don't know, what are their options? Options, they could check the battery, could be a malfunction, or go open a window and get some fresh air. No, 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 no. Sorry, that's, that's all wrong. Never take the batteries out. In fact, that's how two elders lost their lives a few years ago. Mm. The alarm sounded, they took the batteries out, they went back to sleep. They never woke up again. So did these two elders take the batteries out, or did they do the right thing? Would it surprise you to learn that these elders actually held a safety moment not two weeks ago about this very subject? Really? Safety moment. Moment. I think just because Fushing Road is going to be a little more busy today, okay. let's just take the back way. All right, because that construction site. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, and then the last thing is let's just talk about an emergency situation if okay. that comes up. Like, like carbon monoxide? Yeah. Wait, so if the alarm goes off, what do we do? We just head right out. Mm -hmm. Right out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Does that work? Yeah. Cool. It's about Let's go. It. Get out of the apartment immediately. That's the right thing to do. And I know it seems simple, but yes, get out of the building and call the authorities as the mission president directs. And I love how they agreed what to do long before anything happened. That's what I'm talking about. Timing is everything. You have to decide way before while you're thinking straight. Enough, so what happened to those two elders? Oh, to these elders? Yes! Yes. Like that night? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding, let's see. Elders, the CO. Oh, we gotta go. Right now. It's the carbon monoxide. Let's go, come on. Okay. We gotta get out of here. All right. Yes, they did the right thing. Hand pounds and high fives. Because they made the decision long before they needed to. The right decision. Now that was textbook, the real decision point, days or weeks before. All right, my friends, you missionaries, time for a recap rewind. Recap rewind. Let me reiterate, carbon monoxide is not natural gas or propane and it's not smoke. You won't smell it, you can't see it. Carbon monoxide is the result of poor ventilation or incomplete combustion. So you've got to regularly check any appliances that burn any kind of fuel, like room heaters, water heaters, and gas stoves. Check that burners are working properly and venting pipes are secure. And of course, never block vents, even temporarily. And test your detector once a month. Never assume your detector is malfunctioning. Never. And of course, don't ignore an alarm. I mean, come on, right? Right. Don't look for a way to shut it off. Don't tamper with that detector in any way. And when the alarm sounds, get out. Don't hesitate. Just get your companion and get out. Yes, which leads us to a segment we like to call... Let's get it real. Let's Get Real is all about showing you that real things happen to real missionaries. Being obedient to the counsel you've just heard may not only save you and your companion, but others as well. Check it out. On a Saturday in 2016, we were serving together as companions. 
We had been going out that day, knocking on doors, talking to people in stores, and um, we had come in for the night at the end of the day and heard some beeping go off around 12.30 in the morning. We heard the alarm go off and it wasn't like a normal fire alarm and so we didn't, I guess, like hurry to get up, but we kind of went and looked at the alarm detector um, and it had a silence button and so we hit it. And we kind of just went back to bed because it was 12.30 and at night and about probably like 10 minutes later, I'd say, um, it went off again. And so we got up out of bed to see what it was about. And we'll see. So the second time that the alarm went off, um, we took it off the wall and on the back of it, it said that if it was four beeps, then that meant that the carbon monoxide alarm was going off. We're kind of like looking at each other like, okay, maybe this is something that we need to act upon. Um, and so that definitely was probably the spirit giving us a little slap in the face saying, okay, get up. It's okay if you lose your sleep. So in every missionary apartment in our mission, we have something what's called the Red Book. Um, it's a missionary safety guide, a health guide to help us with the different um, problems that we come up with as we go throughout our missionary schedules each day. So we read from this daily, and so we were familiar that there was something in it that was related to carbon monoxide. And so it mentions in the book that if it goes off at any time, day or night, do not ignore it. Go outside and breathe fresh air as quickly as possible. Call 911. And so that's the instruction that we were given, so that's what we did. That particular night, I had my phone on silent. I forgot to take it off silent. And so I noticed when I got up in the morning, I checked a message and it was from these sisters. We had tried to call our mission president, our district leaders, our zone leaders, and our APs, and no one answered. They called the police and ultimately their apartment complex was evacuated as a result of uh, a water heater that had malfunctioned and it resulted in the saving of multiple lives. Actually next door, they had to break down the door because he was already asleep as well and I don't think he was waking up and so I think it was the only door that they had to break down and actually get someone out because the levels were so high in his room. None of the other rooms had detectors and their levels of carbon monoxide in their apartments were a lot higher. I think at the end there was probably at least 50 people that were outside. We had no idea it was anything that was this significant but uh, ultimately finding out all the facts you know it was just a uh, incredible miracle. One of the people that was out there with us, uh, they asked one of the firefighters what would have happened if the alarm hadn't gone off. And the firefighter had said that, you know, you guys all would have died if it hadn't gone off. So that was kind of a big wake up call for us. It was uh, a real eye opener of the importance of obedience, uh, exact obedience. Because uh, if they had just taken it down from the wall like others could have done, uh, just, you know, taking the battery out, we would have just had a tremendous tragedy. I can promise that the Lord will bless you, um, especially as a missionary, because he wants you to be out there helping others. Um, but that I can testify that he will bless you as you're obedient. The biggest thing that I was able to see from the experience is that it's guaranteed that when we are obedient that we will see blessings and that we can see miracles, but that we will also be a miracle in someone else's life. Many of the missionaries uh, that I've uh, worked with, they wonder why all the rules. And I tell them, I don't know why we have all the rules, but, uh, but I know we're blessed by obeying them even though we don't understand at this point in time why. And this is one of those that you'd say, why would you have this kind of a rule? I mean, what's your chance of that happening? But it does happen. And so uh, just be obedient even though you don't understand the reason why. The blessings will come as a result of obedience in every situation. I love that story. Those two sisters are heroes. They actually saved lives. Because they were obedient to mission rules. They made the right decision. And yes, it really did save lives. So you, my missionary friends, you need to decide right now what you're going to do when the alarm sounds. Take time to talk it over with your companion and discuss this critical safety topic at every transfer and with every new companion. I know it seems tedious, it's so important. You are here to share the gospel with Heavenly Father's children. You can't do that if you're injured or sick. So take the message of this training seriously and act on the principles 
you've just and learned. wrap it up 10 seconds to go that's it for this episode for spencer and jaron and the entire crew of the safety zone and vivian saying stay safe out there thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time on the safety zone